We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you will get actionable business advice, hear stories from industry leaders, and share a laugh with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy one conversation at a time. Every time I wear this shirt, you're like, it's too much. And you're like, and you put sunglasses yeah, on. Yeah, she I came in this morning and I put sunglasses on. Good I morning. I like it and I'll take it. Hey. Good morning. Her shirt is like bright neon. We're, we're like thinking that the, the, the Catalyst emblem, they should change the fire well, okay, to that color this week there, for solidarity. There needs to be solidarity. a little more context here, okay? Because one, it's summer. We're at the, we're at the tail end of August. So this We're in color, a cold front. What do you mean it's summer? It's not. It's, it's only gonna be ninety seven today. I think ninety seven. Yeah, yeah that, I don't. I don't call that a cold front. When I wake up and it's seventy and it's gonna stay seventy, that is a cold front. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yesterday, it's like Jeff went shopping and he's like, I got all these awesome new shirts, and I'm like, cool. Why'd you wear the best one today? That would have been great conversation on the podcast because it was the shirt of all these tiny little mixtapes. Because you know, when you get a new shirt and it's like one you like the best, you can't wait to wear it. So I wore it yesterday. I plan accordingly. I'm like, ooh, this is yeah. So you have patience show. and self control. I just have <laughs> blind, passionate. You have neither. neither. Go get it. Just go and get it. Yes. Go get it. What's so, the plan? Get them. Yes, that is always the plan and get them. So, well, good morning, Sandy, and welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. Good morning. Good morning. I heard interesting things about your pharmacy, but like Je the other thing that Jeff and I were just talking about. Well, I'll introduce ourselves. I don't know that. I don't yeah, know. I okay. think we've so, met. I'm hi. not positive. So. I'm Marsha mm -hmm. Bivens. Hi, Marsha. And Jeff Key. Hi, Jeff. I, I have actually met you guys before. I thought we had. Um, I met you. I met you at um, NCPA Multiple Location. Okay. Last yeah. Year. And you asked me what's going on in Kansas. And I. Just said nothing. And we said, go, we'll get on the podcast. <laughs> Nothing's going on in Kansas. Well, let's make something I, happen in Kansas. There you go. There is actually always a lot going on in Kansas. But So um, what part of Kansas are you in? Um, well, right today I'm in central Kansas. And normally our other two stores are closer to Wichita, so south central. Okay. okay. Today I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm more in the middle. One so of our, the... we have two stores that are close to Wichita. And then one store that's about an hour from there. One of the most, I'll sell a negative and then a positive. One of the most horrible stories of my childhood was a vacation in Colorado where oh. <laughs> we, we drove to Colorado through West Texas and up that way. And my dad said, hey, so we can hit more states. We're going to drive back through Kansas. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the part of Kansas where the road was straight, there were no trees, no anything, but just, it's just like infinite I'm crops really sorry. and streets. And we all they, still they talk about- They just chose a bad path. They just um, chose the wrong highway to, to take. That's, that's all it was. The wrong half of the state. That's yeah. the wrong half. So, so uh, <laughs> but after that, later on in life, I visited the other part of Kansas. That's very cool, Kansas City then and that area. Then you called your dad and you were like, I got robbed. Yeah, we were in the wrong part you of the did. state. You should have gone <laughs> over and down. Um, it was very That's nice. Matter of fact, my like, son dad, is uh, moving why did to you, Kansas why did you City pick, here. Yeah, um, I would have been calling my dad and going, why did you pick September. this route? Why did we pick these cities? Like, What, what books yeah, told you that this was the route to take? Did yeah. you go see like the biggest ball of twine and no, the biggest, I know I, I took the well wrong time in that hand, trip hand to wake well. up. That was that was the yeah. I had poor planning. If I'd have known, I'd have slept later. You know, that was the time where you where you laid down in the, the top of the back window in the car. You know, as a kid. I was oh, in yeah. the back seat of the suburban with my my sleeping bag, my pillow, and my my discman, and I made sure to have extra batteries. <laughs> And I slept through every road trip, but it was worth it. So that's my pros and cons on Kansas. But Kansas lately has been, I went to Kansas City the first time, I think, in the last bit, really. There was a, uh, NCPA was there? NCPA, NCPA. Yeah. Yeah. was in Kansas City. Yeah, and that was really nice. It was in Kansas yeah. City, Missouri, which is like kind of on the border. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, yep. whatever, it's all the same. So we are in back to school season also. So I've got one that is going to college. And I understand you have two in college? Yeah. Two so, in college and one's a freshman in high school. Yep, and I've got a freshman in high school also. And so, like, I woke up at 2 this morning and I was stressing about, oh, she needs this, she needs that. And so I'm ordering all of this stuff. 
Yeah, her daughter's like, oh, mom, it's okay. Oh, mom. And she's like, what are you going to do about this? And you need this? And hey, we need to do this. And hey, mm -hmm. there's a little spot there. We could put some kind of storage underneath that. Oh, yeah. And then I finally got the number to one of her sweet mate's moms. And so we're talking back and forth. Oh, and making plans to make sure. So it was, this is a bit, so far, it's been an interesting experience, except for the fact that the girls are doing all the planning. And one of them is a super planner, and I love this girl already. I'm impressed by her. I'm like, can't wait to sit down and actually have a conversation with her. Um, but I'm like, what's going on? Who's bringing what? And she's like, oh, so-and-so's bringing this. So-and-so's bringing this. Maddie's bringing all this stuff. And I'm like, what are you bringing to the party? <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, so this is the time, yeah, that you get to the time in the podcast mm -hmm. that everybody looks forward to. You get to embarrass your children. So tell us about them. Yeah, well, my daughter's the planner. She's the she's the control freak, and, and she has she to have the, everything the freshman organized. In, a freshman in high school, she's, or she's the one that's going to be a sophomore, or is a sophomore at college. College, okay. And she okay. wants to be a teacher. You know, she's organized. It's nice. She'll have she'll neat, have cool bulletin boxing. boards and all that kind of. <laughs> and then, thing. Oh, I can't wait to and see then, her classroom on TikTok. Like, I just saw a really fun one where somebody took Taylor Swift oh, yeah. lines and used them as classroom roles. Like you oh, need to, cool. like the the song you need to calm down. Hey, we're back from recess. Let's use our inside voices, and that was just super crafty. I loved it. All right, so keep so but so yeah, the sophomore, sophomore is going to be a teacher. teacher, and then I have a junior in college, and he's going to be an ag engineer. So he goes to school at, at Kansas State, and he's actually on their tractor team. Yeah, that's they have a super interesting. What's tractor a tractor team. team? And so they they basically build a tractor that a quarter the size of a regular tractor and then they go to competition what and it's an international competition and this last summer they got us uh, they got the runner up and their tractor actually broke oh yeah. and in the during the durability competition or right before the durability competition and so they 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 just put their heads together and and kind of put it all back together quickly and they actually won that competition that wow. part of it <laughs> Yeah. And so, but yeah, he has a, a blast. They build a tractor every year. So that's, remember, so that's an engineering degree. I was degree. like, what is this? It's, it's an engineering degree? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, his, his official degree is um, biological systems engineering with an emphasis in machine. Yeah. Oh, I said it. That's very cool. <laughs> it's interesting. You got, you got all the things in agriculture is being transformed. You got vertical farms. You've got um, these machines that come through and visually see the the uh, weeds and zap them with lasers. You've mm -hmm. got um, all kinds. Of, I think that would be a really cool and exciting field to go into where, you know, like 15, 20 years ago, you'd think ag engineering, okay, you know, that's not very interesting. I'm going to build a tractor or whatever. Yeah, I but, guess that's true. 20 years ago, it would be less interesting but than it is today with the technology cool. and the evolution. Yeah, the drones flying through and, and targeted pesticides and lasers and um, and all kinds of different uh, hydro, hydroponics and mm -hmm. growing vertically with water and super interesting. Yeah, so he's, he's actually our kid that worked at the pharmacy as a technician and one Saturday, he was spacing out, looking out the window instead of working. And I was like, I know your mama taught you a better work ethic than that. And he, uh, and so I said, what's the matter? And he said, well, I, mom, I hate, I just hate being inside. So um, had a friend that ran a dairy and got him a job at the dairy and said, give him the worst jobs. And it changed his life. <laughs> I mean, he loved it. He loved oh, it. He no. said, I him I him him to no, really. ag engineer. And I wanted him to be a pharmacist. Or so that'll teach me, but. Anyway, so the freshman. No. That's super interesting. Does he know what he wants to do? He wants to design roller coasters. Oh, okay. gosh. Yeah, Cohen, yeah. Uh, my youngest, he's a freshman in high school also, and he wants to be do engineering and build stuff. And and I'm like, okay. And he actually just, we just got his scores back from last year's star test, and he did mm -hmm. the highest you could do in math and reading. And the teacher, yeah. because the teacher told him beforehand, these two are the least important. So he was like, okay, fine. I'll do bare minimum on those. And it's just like, <laughs> which teacher said this? And she needs to be like muzzled because this is not what you tell kids. You want them to always strive to do their best and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah, so what, building roller coasters, is that kind of like joining the circus? Is that? I don't think so. Is there a big demand for how many roller coasters a year do you think get built? Well, if you look at. Some of the, I mean, some of the thing that they tried to do one year, Disney anyways, 
And I've seen it at one other place. Well, no, Disney does it at both pla- at a couple places where you get to build your roller coaster and then they put you in a pod. Oh, a and simulator. You get, yeah, and you get yeah. to ride the simulation oh. of your roller coaster. I didn't know they had that. He would love that. That's yeah. really cool. It's it's. I've done it on Orlando a couple times, and I forget which. I think it's at Disney World that they do it. You don't think it was at the old Disney Springs and that because there was one there like that they did away with. Yeah, that's also well. Like I, there was two places, and I know Disney Springs was one of them, and then I want to say Disney World had one too that they may have done away with. That was Future World. Or so, something. what is the degree around building a roller coaster? So he'll be a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer. And, okay. Yeah. And he's got it all figured out, you guys. Like, yeah. I don't need to worry. He tells me that all the time. He knows the place he wants to work. It's somewhere in Idaho. Okay. And okay. He, he likes that company. He's researched them. He knows every roller coaster in the world. Oh, wow. He's like a walking encyclopedia of roller coasters. That's he can tell me how they were designed, how they were redesigned. And I, I that's all because I... I have. Oh, I shouldn't tell myself. But I start spacing out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> did he have any? Uh-uh. Did he have any like thoughts or feedback or opinion about the? Um, was it Carowinds? That oh, that- yeah. So listen to this. We went to. We we actually just got back from Asheville and Charlotte. We stayed up in the in, in the, the mountains, kind of outside of there. And part, one of the days we took the kids to Carowinds and. The roller coaster that broke down was the reason that he's been dreaming of going to Carowinds. So, like, we're making oh him dream come true. And a month before, the roller coaster breaks. And so, oh, no. it's get the run of that one. So, yes, he has told me every detail of that roller coaster multiple times. The roller coaster <laughs> I like at is, Carowinds is the one where you kind of feel like you're flying. Is that the one that broke? No, no, no. That's not the one that broke. The, the one that you like is, it's called a... Uh, black hawk or um it's it's some black bird i know you and sit in it and you it lays you it, forward it doesn't lay you forward because then you're facing the tracks it lays you back because then you're soaring over the audience over people in lines it laid you backwards yeah then sometimes it goes upside down because sometimes i'm looking yeah. at the ground yeah but that was it, great i love that roller coaster so we did my husband and i we get sick on the roller coasters we're getting too old to do that and our kids are old enough now; they could go by themselves. So I actually yes. didn't get to ride any of the roller coasters. It was a glorious day. We went out to lunch. We went over and visited Joe Moose's pharmacy, <laughs> so, and our kids were excited because they got to get away from us for a day and go ride roller coasters. So nice. So one perfect. of the new things that we've we've talked about in the last couple of episodes, and that's you know, educating our younger demographic about in them not knowing what their health benefits are. And it's like, um, you're on mom and dad's insurance. This is all possible. You have a doctor, just call it. And they just, they just don't have that education. And I got into a very frustrating conversation last night with my daughter because she's got a prescription for birth control. And she asked me, she's like, mom, it's expired. It's expired. I can't get it. I'm like, that prescription was written in November you can still get it for two more months. And she's like, no, 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 that's not what they said. And I was like, who said that? Where did you get the, and she's like, I don't know. I just haven't called anybody. I'm just like, oh my God, I want to pull my hair out. And so I opened up the Arcs Local app because it is a customer of ours. Um, and I showed her, I was like, look at your profile. Here's your birth control. And I was like, submit refill. You can pick it up tomorrow. And she's just like, oh, but how do I get it when I'm living in Georgia? Because she's moving to Savannah for SCAD. And so, Erin, I'm sorry, I'm dumping this person on you <laughs> um, if you listen to this. But, um, yeah, it was just like you take the prescription and you just walk into a pharmacy there and go, the, I need to transfer this to you and pick it and you fill it for me. And just trying to educate my 19, about to be 19 year old. And she's arguing with me like she knows I'm like, baby, I've been in pharmacy for 15 years. I think I can. <laughs> I know a little bit better than you do. So what's, I mean, the, what's the freshman up to? Do you, do you think your kids can fig- navigate that world? She's a pharmacy tech at our store. And so she comes on Saturdays and works still. So she's she's good. And then, and then our oldest, the ag engineer. Student, he worked in the pharmacy, uh, so he got a little bit of he experience. He worked in the pharmacy. But his sister's always kept track of everything for him, his sister and his mom. And so, but last year he got sick during finals and he called and he, 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 I, I helped him. I told him what to do and he went and did it. He went to the one of the pharmacies there in Manhattan and got a COVID test and took it and 
he he handled it himself, and then he made an appointment to go to the student health center. And all right, you just bumped that. Where insurance. where is he? I'm like, oh, he was on vacation in Manhattan and got sick. No, he was at at, at K State, Manhattan, Kansas. Manhattan, Kansas. Okay. Yeah, Kansas, the little apple. Okay, the little apple. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, what about your fourteen year old? Is is he working in the pharmacy? Uh, he does odd jobs in the pharmacy, but this this winter he'll start actually working in the pharmacy. And so he, um, yeah, he just turned fifteen, so now he can drive to and from work. Okay. So he's like, Mom, I'll work any days you want me to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, and he's pretty organized. I think he'll be a good pharmacy tech. So what's going on in CPS in Kansas? Yeah. Yeah. So CPS in Kansas, you know, we, um, right at this moment, we, don't, we, we've kind of wrapped up a bunch of our projects. We have done, um, with the Kansas Pharmacists Association, a lot of our stores did a blood pressure monitoring program that was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a baby step RPM. And so, um, I'd, I'd like to take that to the next level. Okay, well, tell, and, can you tell us a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, what, what, is, what is that yeah. about? Well, so basically we did it. This was our second round to do it. Um, it so the first the first round, what we did with um, the Pharmacist Association and then our state health department, it was an 1815 grant. And so we were checking the patient's blood pressure, teaching them how to monitor themselves, and then checking in with them um, every week to see how their blood pressure was doing and then making recommendations to their provider if there needed to be a change. Okay. And so the first round, we sent notes out to the providers, didn't really get any referrals. So we just found our own patients that we thought needed to be doing this and then sent the note to the provider. Is it okay? And of course they said yes. And so the second round that they did it, we decided, okay, this time we're not going to cheat and use our own patients. We're going to see if we can get referrals. And so we went and detailed the physicians again, the practitioners, and, uh, and then this time we actually got referrals from some of the providers in the mm-hmm. area and they were sending us patients that weren't even our patient, which is a little nice. bit tricky because, you know, you don't know their med list. And right. mm-hmm. we had some come on board and become our patient, but, um, you know, it, it was hard. It was a lot harder, but we could make an impact. And I remember one of our patients said um, at the end of it, she said, you, you changed my life because you taught me how to check my blood pressure. You explained to me you know, when I ate too much salt, what that meant and why it was raising it. And really, we just helped her make some lifestyle modifications that hmm. aren't rocket science. It's just explaining what everybody tells her to do, but in a little bit different way, and then checking in and holding yeah. her accountable. And so, yeah, so she ended up not needing her blood pressure medication because she figured out how to control it with exercise and diet. So that was awesome. Wow. Very rewarding. Love success stories like that. So you said you want to take it to the next level. What does that mean or what does that entail? Well, so I have a, a friend actually that's, um, that's doing RPM. And so she's hooking the patients up and, and, and I don't know what all it entails. So, um, cause I haven't done it yet, but she keeps telling me that what I was doing was the same thing. And so basically we would be connecting in with the patients, but okay. then we would get feedback through the machine. And so, but that's, that's on my, on my So on she's my using some list. device that connects, that allows mm-hmm. you to connect the to your provider, right? So yeah. Probably says, hey, guys, report this to yeah. somebody. So if you know anybody that has a device that they love, because when I ask her which device she's using, she keeps saying she doesn't love it. And mm-hmm. so, and I have another pharmacist that was trying to develop his own company, but I haven't seen his device yet either. So anyway. Was he trying to know. develop a device or just connect to a device? He has a brother that's in technology and they were, they were trying to, Developed create a device that you could, yeah, that you could connect to because they they didn't like the way that the monitoring information was coming back to the pharmacy with the company they were using. Yeah, there's all kind. Of, that's FDA and years mm-hmm. of approvals yeah. and yeah, all that well, kind of I, stuff. And I wonder if if it's just a matter of getting the right information because it's and again, I'm not the computer programmer here. I don't know, but I mean, in the conversations that I have sat in on and listened to. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, what information can this device capture and the programmer, the, the software going, what info, this is the information we want. And so I wonder if it's just a matter of, Hey, the programmers, the, 
the software is not thinking to ask for this extra thing. Or maybe not, yeah, I, think, not I think that's that way. what it is. I think he wants it to report back to the pharmacy in a different way. So it isn't necessarily the device. He just wants the information to come oh, back around yeah. to the pharmacy. So it's probably going through a spread uh, an Excel document instead of an Well, we went, kind of I mean, we went through a, or I went to, and, and I know you were with me some of those times, mm -hmm. a while where we would talk to every um, blood pressure person who was at NCPA or, or at one of the glucose shows monitor. And, or glucose mm -hmm. monitor and ask them about how their connectivity was. And it just wasn't, it wasn't there. It, it just would, it wasn't. Would yeah. Bluetooth, it just because yeah, trying to drive to down the price, app. it just wasn't. Yeah. They yeah. could Bluetooth to the person's phone and then Ec the and phone the could send it or something like that. Yeah. But as far as like having a device that you could connect to Wi-Fi and it would automatically send it, there just wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a, and they were proprietary apps and yeah well you know you could go into the app and click send and e you know and send it to somebody but it might be time to i think um it's in cpa probably, it's probably, it's probably time, time to, to walk back through that and, and try to re yeah, look and, at what the options are and and see if if any if anybody have if anybody's created an api that would actually talk to software versus here's the bluetooth option or here's the spreadsheet option yeah which would be more of a either a where we could divide our own app that would work easier or um, have a device that connected to Wi-Fi. So mm -hmm. they just had to set up. But mm -hmm. but again, you know, some people have trouble setting up their Wi-Fi in their house and stuff. So, but if y'all are walking them through, I think it'd be easier if you could walk somebody through setting up their Wi-Fi and then the device just worked, that would be way easier than two weeks from now, they've forgotten how their phone works to send the information in, you know? Well, and I think you could incorporate your community health worker too, you know, or your delivery driver. So we were using um, our delivery yeah, driver as a community health worker. And so he could, you know, he could help walk. That's kind of part of the purpose is mm -hmm. he's a little bit more hands-on patient care. Well, and you got to get so, someone that's also technically savvy too. Mm -hmm. That Yeah. Well, and then it has to be a device they can afford, right? Because a lot mm -hmm. of them already have a device. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Lots of things, lots of things. That's lots why of, lots of on my lots radar of interesting happening. Okay. It, it, you got to decide, but um, I, I have something I wanted to share with you guys. Sure. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. So um, we have three stores now, and okay. the third okay. store that we have is in Abilene, Kansas, which is actually where President Eisenhower's boyhood home was. Which okay. Is cool. okay. Wow. And it's real. It's real historic. There's all these old Victorian homes here. Um, our family lived here and moved away about twelve. Ten, no, 10 years ago okay. and ended up moving to Heston and buying our pharmacy there. Um, but anyway, so we had the opportunity to come back and we love this community. It's so nice. It's so this is kind of like, a coming home of kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. And so this pharmacy that we purchased was started in 1870. Wow. It's the second oldest pharmacy in the state. Oh, and wow. the building that we're in was built in 1880. So it's been in the same building. For that is a fun little historical that is very character. Cool. Like, are so, you able to register that with this with the city or the historical society? Yeah, or? yeah, it is. It's a historical building, and so, um, so I'm learning about what that means in terms of changes I can make to the building and things like that. But so, when we bought this pharmacy, um, the pharmacist that owned it, he's super nice guy, very knowledgeable, mm -hmm. but he didn't get his first computer until ten years ago. So when we lived here, he still didn't have a computer. Okay. And wow. He did get his first computer, and when he was when he got his computer, he was using it like a typewriter. Right. So, so we knew that, and we were like, okay, we're gonna buy this store, and we have all these clinical services that we can incorporate, and that we're all these great things that we're rocking and rolling in our other stores. And um, so, before I came to this store, I thought all the time, I thought, wow, we're really behind the curve, you know, because. The people that we compare ourselves to are the Aminas and the Joes and the Trip Logans, you know, so we're, mm -hmm. we're like, oh, we need to be doing better all the time. So I came to the store and you guys, it, it was so hard. So we didn't have like, we didn't have our software, which today we're getting Pioneer. And I'm not trying to do a plug for you guys, but I have to because I, yeah, I couldn't do your all the things that I do. Like I couldn't, I was, my hands were tied. I couldn't set people up for med sync. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't do care planning. I couldn't even look. We do opiate care planning where we go in and we, you know, we're we're building a care plan to show that we check the PMP and yeah, yeah. couldn't do any of those things. I mean, I just felt lost. Mm -hmm. And so, but the pharmacist was, he knew every pill that he had in inventory, but he was, and he knew, you know, he knew, he, he was filling, counting the pills himself and, and 
doing the refill bottles and he was handwriting down receipt tickets for the patients. And wow. Oh my goodness. I know. And so it took so much time that he was actually busy all day doing that. His technician had never counted. So I taught her how to count when I got here. Cause I was like, you're gonna have to count some of these things. Cause I have a lot of other things going on. I'm not going to be able to count prescriptions all day. So anyway, but it was, a lo- it was, it was just, um, I don't know. It just hit me that there's pharmacists out there, or pharmacies out there, that they're not keeping up, and yeah, so that's I've a gone, way not I've, keeping up. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah like, surprisingly a lot. Like, I've gone to presentations, but I've given tons of presentations mm-hmm. more on you know um, star ratings or doing med sync and all these things over the years, um, and and or care planning and mm-hmm. been a, we were part of Flip the Pharmacy and just really active and involved and had gone out and talked to other pharmacists, but I didn't really understand until I came here how difficult it could be for a pharmacy if they haven't kept up. Right. You know, if they're still doing things the way that they did them in 1990, mm-hmm. like literally even the same cash register <laughs> from 1990 wow. and handwriting tickets, you know, it's really hard. So I I stopped and I thought, well, what am I going to do first to help change this pharmacy? Because I already know where we're going, mm-hmm. but like our patients don't. So I walk right. in and I'm like, yeah. I want to do all these things. And the patients are going to look at me like, you're crazy lady. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, yeah. so I was backing it up a little bit and, and thought, well, the heart of everything that we do, all of our programs is med sync. Mm-hmm. So right. we're, we're working on, and you know, we always present it to our patients and we call it refill reminder, but I don't know for, for the first, well, the very first week we came in, um, I had to learn their software, um, because the technician that worked with me was going to be on vacation the next week. Oh, no. So I had one week to learn how they did everything. And then wow. and then my daughter, Katie, and I were it for the next oh, week. Oh, goodness. And so... I um, have so many questions about his process. Like, how was he... It was crazy. And <laughs> Like, insurance? I, was he even taking insurance? Like, how would you... insurance. And they were running it through. But, um, you know, if, if something rejected, his technician was handling it. And they made a lot of phone calls to see what was going on. And, mm. and you know, but, and it, it isn't like he was doing a bad job. There was just absolutely no time left in the day to be able to do anything else. They yeah. weren't growing the business. He, he weren't was, trying he to was do probably, the, He like, was stretched. It sounds like he was, he stretched himself pretty thin and he didn't leave himself room to think about the next thing. So did right. you move back or are you just going to work there while to you hire a pharmacist? What's the, I mean, you're working that store, right? That's kind of the question of the day. So, you know, our freshman in high school is like, absolutely not. We're not moving. Right. And so it's, yeah, our family still right now, what we're doing is I'm driving up here, which it's an hour. It's not bad, but that's it's actually through the pretty. Yeah. That's, that's not bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and so, um, we bought a small little house that we're going to have here. So we'll, we'll be in both worlds for a while while we figure it out. We, we got enough going on yeah. in the pharmacy and getting things up and running that, um, yeah, we won't be bored. It'll keep us out of trouble. And then, yeah. And and actually where we are, Abilene is just um, about 40 minutes from Kansas State, okay. where our oldest is. And then it's about 35 minutes from Bethany, where our daughter is. And so we're kind of in the middle. Of uh, it's kind of a nice, yeah, nice, yeah, nice, nice spot. central yeah. location. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but anyway, I just, I just, um, I, I'm sure the pharmacists that listen to the podcast, which I listen to the podcast every day. Did you know that or not? I, not every day. Every time you make a new one, I listen to it. Well, nice. Um, well, thanks for that. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm driving, and so I listen to it. And then when I'm listening, I have to hit pause and like think about what they said. And then yeah. <laughs> and then my my staff is like all my new ideas because I'm the one that's always, oh, let's try this, let's try this. And so, but I love it because you guys, you have so many different people on there. Actually, when you asked me to be on there, I was like, I'm boring. Like nobody's gonna learn anything from me. And so, um. I, I, that's why I wanted to tell you about what it was like to walk into a pharmacy. So if there's somebody out there listening, sounds um, like you have a lot of just, yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like you have a lot of just information and experience to offer a pharmacist. I mean, especially, Ooh, especially for pharma, sir, for someone who's thinking about going right out of college and starting their own pharmacy or get, I would never do that. I would never do that. <laughs> right. But no, I mean, you've got I've the experience of basically opening from scratch with this pharmacy, yeah. with this well, current location. Well, buying it. You, you said opening from scratch and she, she bought a pharmacy. Yeah, you're, you, well, we have, we've done all three. So we bought 
our first store we bought from an existing from owners that were ready to retire. We bought our first store. And then two years later, we opened a store from scratch. And the community was like, we had a bunch of people in the community say, will you come and open a store here? We were already delivering to a lot of people there, so it made sense. And then um, and then we actually, in that store, we work with a behavioral health hospital and take care of their patients. And so that's interesting. And then- um, and Interesting so the in what store, way? Um, it's just interesting to- use some of our programs like our adherence packaging mm-hmm. and walk oh, behavioral, yeah. you know, cause with behavioral health, yep. you know, the main yeah. problem is, is non-compliance. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's an interesting challenge. And then, um, just even figuring out how to deliver the meds to the patients, because a lot of times they're not home and, you know, it's just a, a yeah. different population to work with. And it's been fun to figure out ways to, um, meet the patient where they are. And yeah. Tom, our delivery driver, he knows like there's a patient that he knows if he goes there at, at two, he's taking a nap. So he he'll do his route so that he gets there like at three thirty. Or he knows if he calls another patient on the phone and they don't answer, there's no point. Like that day they're done. And so he he has it figured out. So instead of So he's made connections and relationships yeah. with the patients. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I know. So then we can take better care of them. So yeah. meeting them where they're at and knowing mm-hmm. what they need. Instead of it always being about how we want to do it, we really, we try to always think about how do we want our own family cared for, you know, with your family, maybe not your families, but families can have drama, you yep. know, yes. like have a unique character. And so you kind of know. Or- so question, you, you, do strip, you do strip packaging, right? Yeah. So we- if, if you had a patient who needs strip packaging because uh, to keep up with their meds, but they have a med that's based on protocol. So if their blood pressure's here, they take it. If it's not, they don't. What uh-huh. would you do with the protocol med? Um, you have a bunch of different options. It depends on the patient and what's going to work best for them. So we actually have two packaging options. We do strip packaging, and then we also do uh, like the bubbles, you know, the more traditional, yep. the old cards. And the old card packaging, um, we will make changes to those packs. Our strip packaging, we don't make changes to. And so for that patient, it might make more sense if they did the card packaging. Um, with our card packaging program, we put an expiration date on them. And then as long as they're the, you know, they're the patient's meds. And so if they don't use those, then um, we can use them in their next pack because we do a pack exchange program. Yeah. And then um, whereas with our strip packaging, they would just have to throw them away and skip that pill. Um, the other option that we can do is we can, um, we can bottle fill the one med and we have people that'll do that, you know, so put this bottle beside your your blood pressure machine and if your blood pressure is too high and that's when you need to take this then it's sitting right next to it and then you'll know to take one of those pills yeah. and so my, my thoughts was actually to pack that in a separate pouch so give yeah. it like a slightly different time and have the directions uh-huh. very clear if blood pressure greater than this take uh-huh right and that yeah. way it's a separate deal and that way if it's not they don't even open that pouch mm-hmm. um yeah. But that so still keeps that up too. with the times. Um, yeah. Any, any of it works for them. Have you done anything with the robots, the, the, the dispensing robots? I think when we looked at um, my wife's parents, it's, uh, I mean, it, sorry, it's very, very, uh, I'm talking about the ones for the home where you load no. the meds in at the house and you program it in. They're a company. We have, yeah, they're a company. And so we ha- there's, there's a company in our, in our community that does that offers that service but okay. the feedback that i've gotten from patients is that they like our service better um they like to be able to come into the pharmacy and ask us questions yep or you know if they don't understand what one of the pills are they like to be able to come in and talk to our staff or call on the phone and they know who they're talking to yeah and yep so there's there's more to it you know we're not just putting pills in a package we're right. taking care of patients and the package packaging is just one tool that we use to do that. And so, um, so yeah, and I can't see the, the but robots. No. And it's more expensive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for, I, I for, didn't know that the robot was a separate company. I didn't know that it might could work with pharmacies or not. Well, and like the robot, like for my grandmother who it, it there's no telling what, where she's going to be, if she's going to be in Midland this week or Granbury next right. week. Right. She can take the packages with her. The packages mm-hmm. she can just take with her. Whereas mm-hmm. a robot is like, cool. Like, for Kelly's parents, it's perfect because they're not just—they're well, not going anywhere. They're not yeah. going anywhere. 
but um my wife's parents are in uh, assisted living yes but okay well and we we also incorporate our delivery driver into our packaging program too and so he checks in on the patients to see how they're yeah, doing when awesome. he's dropping them off and we do a pack exchange with one mm -hmm. of our programs so the ones that we use the cards mm -hmm. um we send out we can do a weekly pack delivery and just send them one card at a time and they give us back their old one and then we talk to them about you know how it's going why is it used so <laughs> yeah. and then it's surprising uh, because i don't hear a lot of pharmacies like i know joe moose kind of does it um eric larson i think does it does and, and now you just i have not talked to a lot of pharmacies who have actually used their drivers and educated them oh it's a thing cpsn is I know recommending CPSN, so lots of people are recommending that but mm -hmm. how many cpsn pharmacies are actually using that i don't know a lot of people are trying that's uh, yeah they're that's, they're doing a community health worker rollout with um cei has a yeah. program that you can have your pharmacy technician um become community health workers so it just teaches them what to look for we actually have two on our team um, one is our delivery driver that's also a tech and then the other is one of our lead techs that's in the store. And so what I do is I have them attend all of our, um, like our county health coalition meetings and, mm -hmm. and the chamber of commerce events. And so then they know what's going on in the community. And so if we have a patient yep. that needs a resource, then they know, like we could just ask them, Hey, Abby, do you know, is there anywhere that they could call to get a ride? And then she can tell us the two or three places. And then the entities in the community know that we're doing this. And so in turn, then they tell us when there's a new service added into mm -hmm. the community. So it's just a sharing of information. And then we work closely with our health department to try to at least once a awesome. quarter meet with them and, and see what's going on and how we can help each other. And um, yeah, so it's So, so it's tell really us again good. how you train them. How did you, like the different, yeah, I think the, the NCPA the, had a program, I think that you could do mm -hmm. training. I think, uh, how did you train them to become community health workers? Well, okay, so I actually heard Trip Logan, I think it was on this podcast, and he was talking about CHWs. Yep. So that was, was early. NCPA. That was several years. Yeah. That was like yeah. early. Yeah. That was yep. like in the first yeah. 10 episodes. So then I was at an NCPA meeting, and I saw Trip and the poor guy, I beelined across the room, and I was like, I heard you <laughs> talking about community health workers. How do I do that? Because it makes so much sense to me. And he's like, he, so he told me, you know, that he worked with his uh, health department, and then he said that there's uh, most states have a coalition. So I immediately got on my phone and Googled, did Kansas have a community health worker coalition? They did. The lady that was in charge of it had like set up a meeting with me. So I clicked on it. She had an appointment time available in 15 minutes. So I clicked on it. Wow. And I went and sat in my hotel room and talked to her about that I was a pharmacy owner and that I'd heard about this and that I thought it would be really great. And so at first I didn't understand. And so I asked her if I could become a community health worker so I could see what it's all about. And she's like, no, because you're the pharmacist. Okay. And so, um, but what she did is she let me go through their, um, I can actually teach community health workers in Kansas. She let me become one of their okay. teachers. Nice. And so I went through the class so that I learned more about what it was. And then after I learned that, I was like, well, this makes sense to have our delivery driver, Tom, become a CHW. So he went through, I think it's been a year and a half ago, he went through the Kansas Community Health Worker Coalition training and became a CHW. And then cool. after the... After that, um, I heard about through McKesson that they had a grant program that we could apply for another technician. So um, decided to have Abby. Um, I love Abby to death. She's a busybody though. So she's a perfect CHW. Uh, you know, yeah. She's always got her nose in everybody's business. And I, sorry, Abby, if you're listening to this, I mean, it's a compliment. <laughs> so she, but you want a busybody and, right. and then yep. finding out what yes. happened, right? And so, so we had her go through and hers was um, through CEI and that's where their training was. Um, I think like Jake Galdo was involved with that and it's more closely connected to CPSN to what the training is that they're doing. But anyway, so she was our second one and now uh, we have plans to send a technician from our Abilene store to go through it too because we could do all kinds of things. Like last fall, um, our CHW, when he was doing the home visits, we had him uh, do, we did some care planning to check in on our homebound patients. What was their plan for their flu shot? And so then he came back and we put it in their care plan. You know, mm -hmm. they're homebound, they don't have a plan. And then we reached out and it ended up being that there was, um, oh, a group of patients that kind of lived in the same neighborhood. And so we just went out and did home visits and went 
door to door basically and gave everybody we call them floosters because we gave them their flu shot and their COVID booster at the same time nice. and just took care of those patients. But it was because Tom was talking to them and finding out what the plan was. I'm good. here to get my flooster in B12. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> is, so is there any kind of reimbursement there around remote patient monitoring or is there any kind of, uh, we're doing a lot of good uh, things, what are the, but what are the incentives? show me the money, right? Yeah. So, um, so my friend, Christine, that told me about what she's doing. Yes. Yeah, she's getting reimbursed. And so she's working with a provider. So on billing, billing in that way on the community health workers though, is there any kind of reimbursement there? Health workers? Yeah. Um, not directly. So of course, you know, when, when we're screening the patients that we're already delivering to, and we're finding out that yep. they can come out and do a home fluster, we get reimbursement indirectly. Yep. Um, our health department knows that we have community health workers and, they are looking at some different um, grant options. And so I'm hoping okay. that in the future, we can find a way that they could use our CHWs. Um, it's, it gets a little bit complicated, you know, just working with the health department and then to, you know, a pharmacy that's privately owned, figuring out how the money is going to flow for something like that. But we've been able to do with our state through the 1815 grants I was talking about earlier, or yep. we did the self-monitoring blood pressure thing. Mm -hmm. um, the, the grant's purpose was to figure out the impact that could happen on patients. And so I'm hoping that maybe there'll be some avenues like that too, um, that maybe there's some, I, I just, maybe there's some grant money that we can somehow fund either having even more CHWs or just being able to measure what impact they can have. Because I don't think there's enough research on the impact of having a patient face-to-face, -face, but I mean, who else can do that? Right. 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 I mean, we're in that we're at their house and we're taking them their medications and we're talking to them. Well, I mean, there's, there's so enough, much health information. There's enough research right there. there. I mean, as far as customers come back to the places that they like because they've mm -hmm. got that connection. Like there was a restaurant that we used to go to for lunch because it was the only one open during the pandemic. And now all of those people have left and they now work at this other restaurant. And also, the food quality has kind of gone down a little bit and not what it used to be. They've changed the menu up. Um, and so now we're going to this restaurant where the people that we knew us when we sat down, we're going for them. We're going to this one restaurant just for these, these two waiters that know us by name. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we sit down, they know exactly what we want to drink. And they're like, so are we doing this appetizer or this appetizer today? So it's, they know us and it's- Marsha's getting hungry. She's talking about food. It's, well, it's hungry. exactly right. Cause the patient- The milkshake is not holding. <laughs> the patients come into the pharmacy and, you know, a lot of times the homebound patients that we're taking care of at one point in time, they were walking in the door of the mm -hmm. pharmacy. Are you going to have your son register as a, C a CHW? The 15 year old? year old? Or I thought maybe you met my one that I almost fired. No. <laughs> No, I mean no. the one that the, the one that's eager to like, hey, mama, want to work? Put me to work. I can I can drive yeah. there. Now, well, they have so. to they got to go through training we'll class. Yeah, I know he's got to he's got to go through training and classes. He, I know he's got to go through training yeah. and classes. But I mean, if he picks a college that's nearby, then and he's already starting out as a CW a CHW with this location, then maybe he's at a college that's near another location that he could be the CHW there. So we were talking about the community health workers. We we're talking about the the grants because you can do all kinds of things like mm -hmm. you can take pictures of the medicine cabinet, doing stuff for the health plans, coming and looking yep. for fall hazards, all that. Yeah, so, it just yeah, seems the like there's a lot the of opportunities to yeah. bill um, mm -hmm. if you can find the right person to, to That's talk. That's the secret. That's it. We're trying to figure it out. But well, so what we always come back to is are we taking care of the patient the way that we want our own family cared for? Yep. And if the answer to that is yes, then we know we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing things that make a difference for the patient, then we know that eventually we'll figure it out. If it's right. valuable, there's going to yeah. be a way to build for it. That is. That's certainly it's going to be valuable to someone or it's not really valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's true. It's, it's a business so, model of create value and, you know, create the value well, first. Yeah. And, and you know that there's other things, you know, you're, you're, you know, if you're just looking at it from the business model, if you have patients coming into your stores and I mean, we have gift shops in our stores. We use it for two reasons. One is it makes people comfortable and they come yeah. into our stores for other reasons. But um, I mean, I can sell puzzles all day long. And so, you yeah, know, it's, that's interesting. You know? It's the first time I've heard that, the, hey, the gift shop makes them feel more comfortable coming into the pharmacy. It makes it less cold. 
Because yeah. I've, you know, I've been into pharmacies where it's, it's just like, hey, here's OTCs and here's Tylenol and here's cold and flu medication and here's other vitamin supplements that you want. And oh yeah, mm -hmm. and here's like the toilet seats and the walkers. And it, it's, it's cold. And then yeah. I went into a pharmacy, uh, it's one of our, one of our customers and it's in Coleman and you walk in and there's this big gift shop. The place is buzzing because they also have like a burger shop and there's like an Elvis That's for fun. people to pose next to. Like I saw people posing and taking pictures with this thing and I was like, he, he kind of looks creepy. Statues are creepy to me. Um, but it was, it was a lot more welcoming and warming. And then to walk up and go get one of their signature lemonades that they're known for. It was very cool. Hmm. We have cards too. So then, you know, they come in to get a right. card and, and mm -hmm. when you're ringing them up, you know, oh, whose birthday is it? And yeah, and then you get to know them and that just makes oh, that conversation yeah, so much idea. easier. Like, you know, then you, when they come in and they don't understand their medication that, you know, you just know each other. And so they know that you care about them. And so it, it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. Well, and what I hope people <laughs> who are listening or watching the podcast are seeing, it, it's the big difference between a person who had a pharmacy who was focused on running the pharmacy every mm -hmm. day, right? Rather than being focused on improving the pharmacy every day. Yeah. Right. And, and the difference in just, you know, whatever, 10 or 15 years, the guys had the pharmacy, the difference of where you are, you know, you have to running a business in 2023, whether it's a mm -hmm. pharmacy or a coffee shop, Mm -hmm. or anything like that running a business that plans to grow is actively thinking every day how am i going to grow it what are the yeah, ideas we have, at any point in time we have about 10 projects that we're working on and just waiting to see so you know community health workers is one thing rpm is another thing we've been trying to put together a collaborative practice agreement actually we've been working on that forever we um we, do you have time for me to tell you the story sure about, yeah go for okay. it okay so uh we had a physician in the in the first community where we had a pharmacy and I had actually come to um the um what it connect the yeah pioneer trade show and I came a day early to do Amina's class that she had this was years ago like, yeah you know, maybe like 2017 or something like the first year okay. she did it maybe 20 years. and so I was so pumped like I'm like okay I'm gonna be Amina I'm going in <laughs> so I had the the doctor signed up to I called him and I said can I come and meet with you and he's like well, yeah, sure. I'll come by right now. I'm on my way home. So he came over to the pharmacy and I'm like, eee. so I have all the nerves that I want to talk to him about. And he's not even making eye contact, you guys. He's like looking, he's like this. And so I'm like, I, he's, has he been listening to me? And so when I got done, he literally goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, you know what I really like that you do? I like those little pack things that you build. You ought to do more with that. And then he left. And he's like, I don't really think that this other stuff you were talking about, we could do anything with. And so I was deflated and I had a little pity party for a second, but then I was like, wait, he likes something that we did. And so um, ended up taking that and running with it and figuring out how to develop a whole um, compliance program that it wasn't just about putting the pills in the packet. It was about care planning and monitoring missed doses and then working with the provider to be able to make adjustments if needed. And um, so doing some of those collaborative practice things that I was talking about, but not necessarily in the way that I was imagining. And um, so did you warm up over time? Were you working with him with the strip packaging? I mean, it sounds of... like she's she's getting we there. Have, yeah, we have a good I mean, we have a good relationship. We still haven't ever done anything in terms of collaborative practice, like the way that Amina does things. Mm -hmm. um, but we still we have a good relationship with him. He refers patients to us. We charged for the compliance program that I was talking about in a little bit higher level packaging program. Um, we worked with, ironically, so it's a small town, so the transitional support nurse for our, our huge nursing facility that we have um, and independent living, the transitional support nurse is actually his mom. <laughs> so okay. um, she helped me develop, um, she's extremely intelligent, great ideas, totally gets patient care mm -hmm. and helped, helped us came. We brought EMS, the transitional support nurse, um, the local independent living um, advisors and had them all, invited them all to the pharmacy. We sat down and talked about how should we onboard patients? Um, what should we do if our delivery driver is at someone's house and has concerns? You know, what's the appropriate way to reach out and to who should we call? You know, do we call EMS? Do we call the police? What's, what, what should we be doing yeah. here and what do we need to have filled out before when the patient's signing up to make sure 
you know, legally everything were covered liability wise. So right. anyway, we took our program to a whole new level just by listening to what the provider really wanted. Right. And so, and maybe he's not the provider that we're going to do collaborative practice with, um, but he taught us. And so not everybody's going to be in Amina. You know, I'm sure if Amina was there, she would have been able to say, no, 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 turn around. This look is what we're doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't yep. understand. I have what you want, but I'm not quite that good. And so, <laughs> so. You're not there anyway. yet. Don't don't you're be like you're not just, there yet. Yeah, you're you're getting get there. there. You know, build your confidence. You've, you've up. got your inspiration. You've got your confidence. Well, and, and Amina can do that because no, 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 no. Let me show you what I did with this person, right. and I can do that with you too. This is your first one. You can't say, "Hey, well, look what I did with this person." Yeah, right. But you're going to do something right. with this person, she, and then you're going to find the, the next person. She got the foot in the door. She got the relationship with the mother. She's she's he was aware of her packaging program, which that's also a big start. And mm -hmm. now she's able to collect the data from these patients and go, look what I've done with these patients. And this is what I want to do next. Right. And then, hey, right. this is money you're leaving on the table. Let's split this, you know, yep. that kind of thing. And now now you've got the now you've collected and put together the data. So now you can walk in with the Amina influenced attitude and go, this is what I've <laughs> done for your patients. And this is what I would like to do, because this is money that could go in both of our pockets. So so is this is this you? Is this all you? Are you doing all this work? Or, are you, or are you how are you? How are you? Um, okay, great question. Making so the, the team very work. Beginning, in the very beginning, when we first bought our first store, it was mom and pop. It was Adam and I, and I was the clinical pharmacist. I had done, um, before we owned our own store, I'd worked with Project Impact Diabetes through APHA and okay. had been a clinical pharmacist for a chain. And so, and knew that I wanted to get back to my independent roots. Cause when I was in high school, I worked in an independent pharmacy and all the way through college. And so, nice. um, anyway, so in the beginning it was me and then I quickly realized I'm, you know, I can do some things really well, but I'm not enough. And so then when we opened our second store, we hired a phenomenal technician. She was actually a respiratory therapist and I'd known her for years and she's amazing okay. with patients, um, gets patient care mm -hmm. and said, look, really want to take our packaging program to the next level and start incorporating some of these clinical services, brought her on board. COVID hit. Um, she brought two more. One is her twin sister. And then uh, with Abby, our other CHW, the busybody. Yeah. And so nice. um, on the next so, episode, uh, Abby, the busybody. Yeah. <laughs> and then I yeah, know she well, she would actually be amazing. And then um, Rebecca. And so we have three lead technicians that really um, do a lot of our clinical programs. And then last year, um, we also added uh, Courtney, another pharmacist that um, she had experience working in and out. She helped start an outpatient clinic for a health system. And so mm -hmm. she understands okay. collaborative practice. She's done all the things. Oh, wow. And so and she speaks the language of the, you know, of the practices because mm -hmm. they they speak a different language than a pharmacy owner. OK. And so um, hired her on. She came on last year and uh it was, it's been a learning curve for her too, because I think she was a lot like me that she imagined she'd walk into the clinic, tell them what she wanted to do. And they'd say yes. And we'd hit the ground running. It just doesn't work that way. It's a little bit more yeah. complicated when you're not part of the same health system. Right. So what she was doing before, it was all integrated. And so now we're asking for access to, you know, their, their EHR and, and we're an outside entity. And so, but we're not giving up. Um, when we were doing it, we learned that there was a need for diabetes education in our community. So we mm -hmm. got our accreditation and we're starting our diabetes education. Um, we did a, a little baby transitions of care program with our local hospital. Um, and so, yeah, so every day we just, okay, is this working? What can we do next? Keep going. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we have like 10 projects going at the same time, all in the background that we're working on. And it, when we see an opportunity and it's something that we can take what we're doing, we just dive in and say, hey, could this work? And sometimes they say, yeah. And sometimes they say, no. Yeah. So, so a lot of that's having the right people, you know, hiring yeah, the. It's totally your people. Hiring the right people. You see a lot. Yeah. I, I remember there was a, um, there was a Bugs Bunny or a Looney Tunes show once where they, they did this and all the dogs look like the, the, the owners. You know, and they all these breeds of dogs. Oh, and, yeah. And, and so you find this in pharmacies, too, that that pharmacy owners tend to hire people like them. Mm -hmm. And and like pharmacy mm -hmm. owners who are, who are successful, driven, tend to hire driven people. So if Abby's um, a busybody, does that mean you're a busybody? I am a busybody. <laughs> <laughs> Case in point. Case in point. But, but 
But so Courtney, Courtney and I are both focused on patient care, but we do it with a different approach. And she has okay. a completely different leadership style than I do. And so she's very structured, extremely organized, um, you know, crosses all of her T's, dots, her I's. I'm more of the idea person. Ooh, let's try this one. Let's try this one. So we actually complement each other very, very, very well because we have a lot of respect for each other. Nice. And so I know that we need to have structured weekly meetings where we sit down and talk mm-hmm. to each other. I need to have more concrete goals so that she can see if we're achieving the goals and have milestones. Yeah. And she knows that that I need to be creative and that we need to be able to shift gears. And so yeah. we, we work together really well. And then um, our technicians really run our pharmacies too. And so that's, great. that's been mm-hmm. huge. Um, you know, that's why it was so hard for me to come to this store because mm-hmm. the technician wasn't. It was the pharmacist that was running everything. And so we're, you know, Training your we're, we're two months yeah. in and now today we're getting Pioneer. And so we'll be able to have our tools in place and, and change the way we are. But you're right. You need to surround yourself with, um, I heard a, I heard one time on a podcast, of course, they were talking about that you need to figure out where you're weak and that's the person that you need to bring mm-hmm. onto your team. Yeah. You yeah. know, you don't need to yep. find what you do well. You need to find what you do the worst and yep. find somebody that does it really well and then understand that they're going to do things differently than you. Mm. So, Hi. all right. So, I'm doing a speech yeah, I was about to say, for NCPA. You've got to get I'm gonna that ma- question. I, I may in. have to change the subject, though, because I was going to call it 10 ways to run your pharmacy out of business. But we learned about Did a guy. 10 ways to run your pharmacy out of business? Yeah, 10 ways. It's just, ba- you know how you see this lot kind of, it's just a, it's a, it's a reversal. It's it's a reversal. He's basically gotcha. trying to build up. You're, like, you're telling them the things to do by telling them things not to do. you need to do. So if right, you're yeah. not doing these things, you're going to run your business out of pharmacy. But we heard a story of the day <laughs> of, of a guy who had a pharmacy who wasn't doing anything, who didn't run it out of business. He just didn't grow it. So, I think so the, maybe it's going to be 10 ways to keep your pharmacy from growing. How's there that? You that I, I there like, you go. I like and so we're asking all our guests for that's, an that's idea. More po- that's a more the, positive spin. The, than the two ideas had. so far are um, involving the team. Those communicate. Yep. You know, if you don't communicate with the team, if you want your pharmacy not to grow, um, don't know your patients if mm-hmm. you want your pharmacy to grow. <laughs> right. So what um, easier phrasing? What would you say one of the top ten things is to grow your pharmacy? one thing is getting involved in the community getting involved in the so community the yeah. number one thing that you can do not to grow your pharmacy is to stay, stay inside at, the walls for your pharmacy yeah don't get out of the community you need to have yeah. you need to have a staff so if you're a one-man show you need to have a, somebody that's a relief pharmacist that can come and give you one day to get outside your walls you need to um i learned so much about so i'm on our hospital board i'm on the local nursing home board and then i'm on the cpsn board um so i I'm busy, you know, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm on the Kesson's NIAP board. So I'm always out there talking to other people and that's mm-hmm. where I get all my ideas. Yep. And, or like tomorrow morning, I'm going to go, there's a, um, a senior health fair here in Abilene. And so I'm going to go have a booth there because nice. I want to talk to the people yep. that I want to yeah. have as my customers and here, you know, what are they thinking about? What do they think pharmacies do? What do they think is missing in our community and just kind of get to know them. And so if you, are you don't do want to grow, shots stay there? inside. No, I can't, but you can't do any, you can't sell anything there and you can't do anything okay. like vendorish. It's just supposed to be information, but I can gotcha. tell them they can come to my pharmacy. Right. Yeah. And so, or get and, their, uh, I give an appointment, I guess. And they could buy a puzzle while they're here too, or a lotion or, you know, like, yep. but, um, and so, but yeah, that would be my number one thing is you have to, you have to be out in your community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I think that that's what's wrong is pharmacists get so wrapped up in, yeah. you know, I've, I've got this double DIR coming up. I'm not getting reimbursed enough. I'm watching all these negative remits and I'm, there's no way I have time to go out and talk to people, but really that's how people know to come to you. And yeah. so, and that's how you know what your community needs. Cause not every community needs the same things. I love it. So basically build a team, get out mm-hmm. behind the four walls of your pharmacy and get involved. Yeah. yeah. And lots of different things. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and we've mentioned that, that, that a couple of times of, in the I, podcast, yeah, but it I kind of nicely and, like flows that, into. Yeah, that, that probably is the, it'll be interesting as we grab the whole 10 to try to figure out what the number one is. Mm-hmm. And that's got to be really close to it. Yep. There's, there's Run one the other trash, thing I was told you. Okay. I heard, I heard, um, so I was listening to John Maxwell's another podcast that I listened to mm-hmm. and, um, he had a quote, um, it was that your attitude is a choice. Yep. And then I, I'm going to mess this up, but I'm, so I'm going to read it and. You are not what you think you are, but what you think 
you are. So like you might, for example, customer service. Do you know any pharmacy or any business that ever says they give bad customer service? They don't say that. Everybody says we give great customer service, right? Yep. But the pay, but, the Google views but if say they're, different. If they're, right. Yeah, and if they're thinking like negative things about their customers, then they yeah. start mm-hmm. doing bad business. And so yeah. you're not what you you're not what you think you are, but what you think you are. So if you're in pharmacy and you're spending all your time thinking about all the negative things and having a bad attitude yep. and thinking I don't have time, I don't have time. Well, you yeah, won't. that's interesting because you like, never will <laughs> in that, you know, don't point a finger because there's 10 more pointing back at you or, you oh, know, yeah. if, if you're going to, if you're going to cry, the baby's going to cry with you. If you're not calm yeah. and happy, the baby's not going to be calm and happy. So it's kind of interesting when you think of just all that full circle. Well, yeah. and that's it. And, it. and once you decide that that attitude's important, the acting yourself in a better way of thinking, mm-hmm. not being mm-hmm. negative, there's, yep. a, there's a cartoon that I always hated to see. That was um, like making fun of the patient pharmacist reaction about kind of silly things patients say. I don't know what it was, but every oh, time I thought that every, you were going to say Wonder Twins. No, every every time <laughs> I watched it, it made me angry um, because I was like, pharmacists shouldn't be thinking that way about their customers. You know, no, you should mm-hmm. care. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you will. Whatever you're thinking is what you'll end up becoming. Mm-hmm. I had a friend. I had a friend one time that um, called me up, and she said, "I'm making a list, and I'm." I'm marking people off my friend list and I was oh, like, no. okay, is this my notice or what? <laughs> she said, no, you know, I've just decided that there's people that have bad attitude and they're bringing me down and it's not healthy for me to be around them anymore. Yeah. And I said, okay. And she's like, you're still on the list. And you're so, still, Phew. Yeah. but I've, I've really carried that with me because she's right. You know, yeah. you're, right. you're hanging around, you know, it's like my kids, like my mm-hmm. freshman in high school, you know, you tell that to your kids all the time, make sure you're hanging around people that are good people because yeah. you're going to become what they are. And yeah. so that's the other thing for pharmacists. You know, you need to hang around people that are healthy and looking forward to the future because yeah. there's so much that yeah. you can do. In and our you're going to find those people at NCPA mm-hmm. and at Connect. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, when my wife was, my wife's this incredible, happy, She's positive so person. We love her. And still, I said, She's she amazing. Is. She She's is. so positive. And, but out of school, one of her first jobs, we were in Houston and all of a sudden she was coming home that was missing. You know, she was not, yeah. you could tell she was kind of down and come to find mm. out she was sitting with a group of girls at lunch who were just the hospitals, this bad, wrong, this bad thing doing, they're doing mm-hmm. this thing, this thing's wrong. This thing's like, you got to get away from them. You got to mm-hmm. not sit there and throw that trash into your head for an hour every day. Um, and yeah. You have to be smart. Like I don't live in La La Land. I know that like, you know, I'm seeing the negative remit. I'm, I know that reimbursement isn't great. And so, but if I spend all my time hanging out with people that are just complaining about that, you know, on Facebook, there's some different groups. Yeah. I've left some of them because the people are just so negative. And it's yep. like, this is not getting us anywhere. This isn't taking care of patients. Internet this bullies. isn't the attitude right. that I want to yeah, we, people Yeah, with. I want to be part of a group that's looking about things we can do, not well, what we and can't and do. Not looking at mm-hmm. things we can do, but it's like, hey, I've got this problem. Can somebody help me? Right. Instead of getting on and then letting people chime in with, well, here's the solution, here's the solution, here's the solution, versus like you said, the, probably the groups that you left were the groups that were just, they loved to complain. They didn't yeah. want to look for a solution. They yeah. didn't want to. They're not going to get anywhere that way. Yeah. And, and so, we'll see. That one, it's, 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 that one may make, you may have given me two. That one may make the yeah, top 10 too, one. is protecting the attitude of you and your yeah. staff. And, and, and that means you get somebody who works with you you have an employee that's just negative and can't change. You need to get them out. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things I've we did early on. Hire with, with, someone that compliments your energy. You know, one of the things we did early on with Pioneer is. Or boost you. Because um, we hired a lot of people. Right. right. People that got in who were just negative, especially in support. Mm-hmm. We just got them out. Mm-hmm. Because that's. You that to. You have to. Um, I, have, I mean, so part of my part of my role in the pharmacy is the staffing. So I, you know, I, I typically interview and hire and train. And I mean, I. It's not always fun, but I've pulled people out of the workflow and had conversations. Everybody always says, if I say, can you come into my office? They're terrified. Yeah. But, um, you know, but we do. We have to have conversations like, this is what you said to the patient. And did you think about, because sometimes I think people say things to the patient rudely or mm-hmm. they don't even realize it themselves. So you, so we change the tone and we talk about how we're going to word things and what, yeah. what, what we're going to say to our patients. What's our message on what we're trying to do? Mm-hmm. And- we have a culture in our pharmacies that everyone knows this is just going to be 
the norm. And so um, it's the expectation. And I mean, basically, if you if you don't want to live up to that expectation, then this probably isn't going to be a good fit for you. You're probably not going to like yeah. working here right. because because that's just the way it is. And so um, and our whole team holds each other accountable for that. So uh, we, seriously, we have the best team. I mean, I could go down the line and tell you about what the special spark is with each person on our team. They all bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they first start, we aren't sure what it's going to be. But um, then the light bulb will go off and we're like, oh, you know. Not quite Andrew's sure what you're bringing to the table yet, but we're sure it's going to come. <laughs> we know you're waiting for the light bulb. <laughs> what you're bringing to the potluck here. but, uh... but Well, and that can help decide what you're going to do next, too. Because, yeah. you know, you got to look at who's on your team. And if you're thinking, yep. what you know. Are. Yeah, if you're thinking I want to do this clinical program, but you don't have anybody that's interested in it, then there's no point in doing that. Like yeah. we had, um, we've had several people ask us if we wanted to get into compounding, but none of our pharmacists are even remotely interested in that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's unless we hire a pharmacist that is, that's not going to be where we go next, just because. Well, I don't want to do it. Or somehow <laughs> send send some send one of the other ones to something that inspires them, or get them yeah. get them yeah. you know send them to spend a little bit of time with somebody who loves compounding, and maybe mm -hmm. they get the spark. To yeah. maybe that, that yeah. that's what they need to get the light bulb to kick on is go yeah. spend some time in a compounding pharmacy. Some little but, retreat, but but all right, we are over time. Are, I had time flies, and we're having fun. <laughs> It was a real pleasure getting yeah, to know you a little bit nice, better. And, Sandy, and we know you've got a busy day ahead of you. Today's go live day for you, right? When that in the pharmacy that you're is in. It's a go live. It's go so, live day. I've been counting down for this day. I'm so happy. Best day ever. <laughs> I I've never so been so happy, happy in all my you're life. Like beaming. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm so happy. I have this huge calendar here, and I've marked it down from day one until we get Pioneer. Uh -huh. And then they called and they moved us up a week because of the holiday. I was like. I'm sure you guys could hear me. I was screaming yes, so happy. Please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. Thank you well, for we enjoyed it. Today. Have a good day. Thank you. And a Thanks, great Cindy. week. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.